Senior personal finance correspondent Sharon Epperson joins us now with some tips on how to recession-proof your life. And Sharon, uh, good timing for this. Lots of questions out there. Lots of questions, lots of worry, lots of panic. Stop. Breathe. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first and thing think about do. what you can do. What do you have control over? We don't have control over the markets. We right. don't have control really over the economy either, but we do have control over our own income, mm -hmm. our own saving, our own spending, and where we put our investments. So we can make some tweaks perhaps that'll make us feel a little bit more comfortable, starting with that income and starting with your job. Meaning I should get a second job? I should go <laughs> in and ask for a raise? How no, do I control you my income? No, focus on the job you have oh. and step up your game. Okay. Monday morning, go in, say, I'm going to give it all that I have. I'm going to be a critical player. They're, they're not going to be able to live without me. So that if there are layoffs at any time down the road, you're not going to be the first one in line to go. Smart. You want to update your resume. May always do this. Every couple months, you should update your resume, your LinkedIn. Make, make sure people know what you're doing and reach out to recruiters, to your professional contacts. Again, keep that going on an ongoing basis. That's something we should all always be doing, but we don't think about it when we're comfy in our jobs. Now that there is all this talk, let's see if we can do something about it. What about your finances, your savings? Think about how many people don't have emergency savings at all. Now's the time to really review your budget, look at what you can save, how much more can you put into a savings account, and figure out where to put that. Put it in a place where it's going to get the best interest it can, not a lot, but still an online bank savings account is probably going to be the best place. And when, if, in fact, you were to get laid off or something, an emergency happened, three to six months worth of living expenses in an emergency fund is a great start. Six to 12 months may be more realistic in terms of the time period it's going to take you to get that job. You mentioned we should be saving more. Does that mean we should be cutting back on spending? Well, it means you should be reviewing your budget and think of things that maybe you can cut out. And you also want to make sure that you are paying down the debt that you can. And this is something we don't do enough of. Use cash. Mm -hmm. You know, it can really help to curb what you're spending because you're just using cash, you're just using your debit card. It's not something that where you're going to rack up more debt. Again, if anything happens, if there is a recession, you want to make sure you have as little debt as possible. What about your nest egg? Is there anything I should be doing to adjust that? So if the money is invested in the stock market, for instance, you're not going to want to get access to that money for at least five years. That should be a general rule of thumb. So if it's money that you're going to need, don't have it in the stock market to begin with. If it's already there, leave it there. If you're a long-term investor for retirement, for college savings, for whatever the long-term plan is, leave your money there. But think about where you're going to put it. Make sure you're diversified in terms of your taxes, too. We've talked a lot about Roth accounts and the benefits there. Make sure that if you are, if you can, maybe you convert some of your traditional 401k IRA money to a Roth account. Um, maybe you consider putting more of your dollars now into a Roth 401k, put money into a Roth IRA for some of your savings. Those are things to think about. Where you're putting it, not just what you're investing in, but where you're putting that money. Now's the time to focus on that, too.